All right. Much to your misfortune, I am live. Let me just make sure I am. All right, if somebody can just let me know if we are live, of course, um, if we have sound and all that other fun stuff, because that's usually a challenge. Anytime I do anything on this channel, it is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. But today I'm going to be testing myself in the ultimate way. Video and sound is good, says Miss Helen. Well, we're going to be testing it out because we're going to be doing Cloudspire. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this game. This is the tower fortress, uh, the tower defense game that you always wanted. There's no doubt about it. Um, it is amazing. And um, it is a little challenging the first couple times to really do it. And it really, really is um, a tough game to do. To play by yourself let alone get everything right let alone do it live so I'm just giving you some disclaimers that I may mess things up I may get a little confused but the most important thing is that you get a look at what is probably going to be again just like with every other chip theory game for the last four years a game in my top three uh, of the year and I can I can tell you right now uh, just by how I've tried to mess around with this and stuff like this this is definitely a game of the year candidate for me. Um, but I'm going to do a review on it. So during that review, I'll explain a lot of things. I'm going to try to keep this within an hour. I really don't want to drag it out and make it too tough. Uh, I believe Shannon should be here somewhere. She is from Chip Theory Games. I want to thank her if she did pop in. Uh, she's going to help us with any rules that I completely screw up in. Uh, ruin the integrity of the game as you know I do not pronounce it pronounce things very well um, because of my my condition but let's just say this much we will do everything that we can to make sure that you have a good experience here and that's what it's all about and we're doing it live so what's better than that so you can ask questions matter of fact uh, even without my glasses I can see the glorious chip theory logo and that means Shannon's here Shannon will answer any questions that you guys have. Now, if I have any questions, we may have to delay it a little bit and so forth and so on. But if I can get a good wave in, I think you'll see what we're talking about. Now, I'm going to be doing the solo rule. So why don't we just take a peek down at the table and see what we got here. All right. Oh, look at that. Huh? Let me turn on the other light because I didn't want the glare in your faces. <laughs> okay. One of the things that we will not be playing with that is the event deck the event deck is awesome though um it is something that that adds a lot of flavor to this game can help you out can do a lot of things i mean what can i tell you uh they when do they do anything wrong that does not we do not need the event deck for the solo rules the other thing that you will not see is the marketplace uh we talked a little bit about the marketplace where you're going to be able to buy things with what you're going to be doing that does not play into this what we're going to be doing and i'm going to show you is actually the solo adventure now this has all been pre-set up and i've taken care of this and i'm going to point some things out before we really get going our object our objectives destroy all uh marinette spires that's this guy right here and you can tell he's stacked now what's he stacked upon that is considered a fortification and he's got five of these he has two range attacks and he has two close combat attacks so what does that mean you walk by this you're gonna get drilled that's pretty much my boy here cam cam the mighty okay he is the only hero hero that is going to be here okay um, normally you'll be able to put out other heroes and so forth and so on here I've already got my minions that I paid for. I am allowed five command points at the beginning of the first wave. So I was able to purchase a Battleborn. Oh, hold on. I'm going to show you real quick. And I decided to go with a Dispatch who has a range attack of two. First of all, the art is fantastic. Everything with this game is fantastic. I mean, what do you expect? What do you expect? Um, there are 
there's a power called the source, okay, and there are source wells in each one of these. These spires have to be all taken out. If I take out this one, I get a star. If I take out all of them, I get a star. If I defeat, and over here, he comes out in wave three, which is Darb, I will also get a star. Now, what we're going to be doing is, is dealing in waves. The first wave is already predetermined, and we have three Harriers here. They remain in a group. They have Quick Strike, so let me just explain a little bit about them. Now, you can do a couple of things. If you look over here on this side here, I have minions, but as you can see, they got health for, for themselves, which means that they're going to split up and they're going to move. Minions move by themselves, and it's predetermined. They are taking the shortest route possible, and this is a road, to get to this fortress. And what they want to do is destroy the fortress. Well, they're not too smart along the way because there's things that are just going to attack and destroy them. Cam, I control. I can move him backwards, forwards, sideways, anyways. And that's the way that will go. Tell me if I'm messing this up, Shannon. <laughs> Um, the Harriers here are grouped, okay? And as you see, I have the three Harriers in my hands. Once I defeat one Harrier and they lose their health, well, he's going to come off. He's going to go away. We're going to get the reward for him. And then the next Harrier. So you cannot hit like 20 hits on this thing. You will only defeat the first Harrier and then the next Harrier is up. They are immune to damage because they are in a group. They also have one thing in mind, and that's to get to my fortress the quickest way possible on the road. They do not, they cannot travel uh, through any of the other terrain. Cam, on the other hand, he has an ability. He can go through mountains. Now, with mountains, it's very simple. Okay, mountains is the third highest. First is is your path, plains, forest, mountains, then water. So if you have a mountain, uh, on uh, um, uh, checked off on your ability here, you can go through everything except water. Okay, if we had water, you'd be able to just travel and go wherever you want. All right, so. We took care of everything here. The first thing that we're going to do is there are six phases. Okay. And I'm going to show you in the nice bound book. This is not the final rule book. We are doing the best that we can with what we have. There's going to be some changes, but for the sake and purposes of this, we are just sticking with the rule book at hand. I'm sure there'll be some changes and some things, and this game will be as smooth as everything else that they ever do. Event phase. Well, we talked about event cards. That's what comes out. Income phase. Uh, that is when you get your income, basically. Market phase. We talked about market uh, chips. You're going to spend your stars and be able to buy certain things that are going to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, build phase. Okay. You're going to build. We. I already did the build phase. I build everything for both sides. So we're off and running. Then uh, preparation phase, which I believe I, pr oh, um, I pretty much did. We're all set to go. Preparation. Okay, yeah, I prepped up uh, their, their guys, and we're ready to go. And then there is onslaught phase, and we're just going to play pretty much through the onslaught phase because we have to keep going. To, to end the wave, we have to take out all of these guys. Along the way, we have to try to collect source. And that's, um, let me switch cameras here for a second. See, oh yeah, see, so you guys can see a little bit close up of what's going on. All right, this is source. This sits within your fortress. You are going to be trying to get source. We start with no source. But if we're able to clear the wave, I believe we get seven source. But you need a lot more than that. Command points are going to get you um, minions. Source points is going to help you upgrade those minions and also upgrade your fortress. 
Okay. Whew. Okay, I think I said everything. I gave you kind of an overview of what's going on. We're going to get going, and we're going to do what we do best. Mess this up. All right, so in the event phase, which we're going to start with, because we're going to skip over all the other phases, believe it or not, because basically, let me just make sure I have everything here. Not, nothing else, no build phase, there's no market phase. All right, so the event phase is, is the D6 event. What happens? It's going to be a randomized setup. So I'm going to roll a D6, which I believe I have right here. That's right, correct. When we get to combat and all that stuff, I'll explain it the best I can. All right, here we go. So we're going to roll. And it is a six, which is not good. <laughs> not good. I am going to be swapping the A Spire and the D Spire. And the D Spire, oh, no, no, no. Now, there's something particular with this particular Spire. This is a Regal Lookout, okay? It has two range. That's when you get close to it. But it also has something called an Elf Elfinkazi, okay? And I'm going to show this uh oh, I'm going to show this to you guys over here. Whoops. All right. All right, what this thing does, it has uh flying and roost roam. And what that roost roam means is because of this ability on here, one, you get an elf. Well, we got the elf in there, but he has roost 3 and he's going to be going after Cam. So if Cam, Cram, excuse me, gets in any of these three away, he is going to come out and he is going to do something really nasty. And that's called uh, Glide Bomb. And that's everything in that area is going to get hit for two. So when that happens, be ready. So I've got to kind of plan things out a little bit. And i got to be a little bit more methodical. Now, just to go one further... They will not, the elf will not attack our um, our minions. But of course, we got everything else that is in range that will. All right, so that's the first bad thing to happen to us. Oh, that's great. All right, what's the next thing? Okay, so there is no market phase. There is no build phase. We already prepped phase and got our Harriers ready to go. And now it is time for our onslaught phase so this is where movement happens and I believe I've got this right uh, let's uh, switch over to the other camera we're going to move okay and I'll explain things along the way uh, our battleborn has a movement of two so they're gonna go one two our dispatch, which is right behind it, has a movement of two, but cannot go back on top, okay? And cannot go over. So if he had more movement, he cannot over. You have to really strategize things out because there's a lot of things that'll happen. Our Harriers here have a movement of four, so they are moving. So they're going to go one, two, three, four. As you can see, they cover a lot of ground. Now, over here, we have a swamp that we can check. So, I kind of want to decide whether or not I want to do that. There could be something bad under here, or there could be something really good. Mm, I don't know. Now, the first thing you do in combat, because now we've moved everything, we're going to be checking to see if anybody's close enough to get a hit. Well, our buddy here has a... Uh, the, the minaret, excuse me, has a range of one, but it also has two upgrades. So that means it has a range of three. So it's one, two, three. No, our our guys are out of range. Uh, are we in range here? One, two, three. No, we are just barely out of range. And everything else is out of range. And of course, our harriers are way out of range. Let's get this dice out of the way. Uh, now it's our turn. Do we have any range? Well, two, not going to do anything. We have nothing here that is going to give us any range, but I 
think we want to check under here. What do you guys think? Oh, Braun men get to finish their whole turn before the heirs move and take their turn. Oh, okay, thank you. I don't know why I was going back and forth. I, I just kept I kept doing everything at the same time, and I think that's because I was playtesting it. But thank you. Okay, so all we would do is just move that back, but that's okay. We'll wait. We'll finish our whole turn, and then everybody will move. Um, but honestly, I think we're going to take a shot here, and we're going to see what's underneath here and see what it is. Ooh, there are bees underneath here. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Uh, hold on. We have bees. Okay. Now, what do the bees do? First of all, they have three health. You got to be careful because there's some things that can cause you some real headaches here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh. Um, the thing here is with the bees, if I defeat them, I get four source. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you because I wasn't sure on the next turn, am I allowed to spend that source, um, Shannon? And what's going to happen is the way combat works is the bees are going to do a hit back, a uh, hit. But we hit them first. So our Battleborn would hit here, and that would, remember, all we do. There's no dice rolling except the spires roll for damage. What's going to happen is I do one damage. Okay, now if they had armored or something like that, they would be able to absorb it. But they're bees, they don't absorb nothing. So he's going to take one hit here. They do not have retaliation, that's true. I do my turn first. The dispatch has an attack of one, so he's going to do a damage. And then Cram does two damage, which one was all we would need, and we kill the bees. Yes, on your next turn, you could use that source to construct a spire. See, that's what we want to do. All right, so we killed the bees. We got four source. So over here, I know you guys can't see it because of the camera angle here. Let me see if I can just back up. Can you? Oh, no, you can't see it. See, I'm looking at the TV screen. Am I looking the right way? Oh, you know why? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get the whole picture in there. I'll tell you. The most un... Boy, Chip Theory games, you guys picked the wrong guy to do stuff. If you wanted professionalism, you could have got a goal post. All right, there we go. All right, sorry about that. I was sizing up the other cameras, and I forgot to size this one up. All right, there we go. All right, so anyways. Um, we got we started with zero, so they have a nice little notch here, and we're going to put it on that four. So now we're going to remember. Oh, by the way, each fortress starts with 10 health, just in case you need to know. All right, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. Boy, I'll tell you, I, I didn't mess anything up. Now, because he's defeated, I believe, because Cram defeated him, Cram gets, I think we picked just the right person for the job. Thank you. Okay, because Cram defeated him, I believe I get an ability. Hmm. But we'll worry about that next. And he was defeated, so he does not get... A retaliation perfect all right so but I believe he gets an ability but if we do I'm gonna put it right here I think I want to I want to up my attack because I really need to hit things and uh, oh boy yeah I think I would because that would give me three damage to do but we'll wait for Shannon to confirm that okay so that's my movement that's my movement my fighting everything done bang boom well I've got some news for you folks it's time for these Harriers to move, and they have a movement of four, and they are going to be flying. Now, Darb here, okay, Darb is a special character. He is not going to be moving until 
turn uh, wave three, but I don't think we'll get to wave three. What I will do is uh, I'll end the wave, and then I may do another live show over the weekend at some point. Um, it's only because my son moved into the house, and he's driving me crazy. As much as he's moving out, I'm, I'm happy for it. One, two, three, four. But the work that goes into it is a pain in the neck for sure. All right, so there we go. So we got that. Boy, we got to we got to stay kind of away from him. This is really really, really going to be tough. All right, so they moved. Everything's done. Now, we go back to the event phase. There's no event, there's no income, there's no market, but there is a build phase. And I can and they have these wonderful cards that I want to show you guys that you are going to be able to purchase certain things. And uh, let me just move this back over here. And we have these, these little pegs. And the cool thing about it is that they go into the things that you want to build. So you're going to be able to do certain things and add certain things and so forth and so on. Really, really neat concept. I really think really fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking and trying to think what I want to take. Cram gets an upgrade. Oh, there, yep, I was right. See, it pays to read the rules. But, oh, God. <laughs> so, so, to get level one, we have four source that we can spend. And I'm trying to see what we can spend for our four source. Now, we can... Level one, cost four, forsaken dispatch. Gain an artillery die, single use. One use, uh, maybe. Ooh, Honor Pit. Battleborn Arena Games. Upgrades Battleborn Minions. Hmm. So I would be able to upgrade that minion if I decided to take that? What would we get with this upgrade? Well, he would move three which would help us a bit. And he would attack too. That might be the way to go. Hmm. Will we get that upgrade on the Battleborn right away though? That's the interesting part. The other thing is gate port. May purchase twice. Oh, that's market buyout. That's not going to help us. Um, I could build a spire though. At the start of your turn, this spire may attack another spire fortress. So I would be able to build, because I control this, this is an area of control of mine, I can build a spire here. Um, the only ones that I don't think you can use for this particular scenario, you don't happen to have a sp the spire mini minis, do you? No, if I had the spire minis, they'd be painted and look glorious. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I believe there was something that I couldn't build in the first uh, first thing. No, I can buy it. I can build a spire here. It just depends on how much source it would cost. Uh, you would gain three, but okay. That one... Okay, so let me just show you guys this so you guys understand what's going on here. There are spires that you can build. Just like they have spires, well, we can build defense spires. So, what we can do is we can buy one of these if we have the cost. Now, we have four, and it would cost us... The one thing I'm not sure about... Oh, boy, this one would be decent. And we don't... Oh, well, we can buy a mining. A drilling outpost. Which would give it a fortification. Boy, I just wonder if I need... Because of where everything is, if I need to take these things out. You don't have access to siege towers. Or a lance launcher. Until you get that fortress enhancement. That's right. You can only dispatch platforms or drilling posts at the moment. 
I don't think that's going to help me. I, I, I've really got to take, take it to these guys. So what I'm going to do, and I'm sorry I'm dragging this out, but this is some of the decisions that you're going to have to make in this game. And that's what makes some of this so much fun, is when you have the chance to upgrade something, is trying to think how you're going to play this out. There is a lot of strategy that goes into it. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Honor Pit, and I'm going to upgrade my, my uh, Battleborn. Uh... Upgrade Battleborn Minions. Yeah, so I'll be able to flip that minion over, I believe. If that's the thing, I'm going to go with Honor Pit. So what I would do is come over to Honor Pit, and I would put it in number one there. All right, so that would flip this dude over, and he would move three and attack for two, which is pretty good because I'm kind of in a bad way here. And I've got to get my attack in before it's too late. All right, so I believe that's the way that goes. So now that I've, I've finished the build phase, we're going to go to prep phase, which there is no prep phase, and now we're going to go to movement phase. So I'm going to do my entire movement. I think you missed my note above. You can't do fortress enhancements during the onslaught, but all good. Oh, okay. Okay, no problem. Got it. Well, it was a great idea. Oh, that's right. Because I have to go back to that phase. Okay, cool. Got it. But at least I got to explain everything to you guys. So when we do go back to that phase, we will. So we're in the middle of the onslaught. Let me flip this guy back over. So now I'm in a bad position because nothing good is going to happen here. So these guys have to keep moving. They have to. So they have to move two. One, two. One, two. Now here's the problem. We have a range of two that's not going to help us any. I really... Hmm. I really don't want to move forward where one, two, three... Uh... He's going to come out one, two, three. He's going to try to take as many people as he can out if I move up in here. So he would come here. So I really don't want to get anywhere to three. No, that would not be enough to. Oh, it would be. Well, if I'm within range of three. See, I don't want any part of him. So I think I'm just going to move one, two. And we're going to try to get over here. So here's the thing that's going to happen, and this is not good at all. This has a range of three. One, two, three. My dispatch is right in that range. What happens is, is that because they have range, we are going to roll two dice. If, uh, let me make sure. Here are your dice, okay. When we roll dice for these guys, which is glorious. Oh, but one more thing I want to uh, add, and I know I'm kind of dragging this out a little bit, but Friday, you can still uh, get in the pledge manager for this, and um, and you can uh, get in on this game up until Friday. That's why I wanted to do this as, uh, earlier, but I couldn't. But um, I'm telling you, these guys have always been on time. I have a good feeling that uh, you know this will be here in time for Gen Con for sure. I mean, look at the quality of this stuff. Okay, so again, going again, we're I'm trying to get bones. In my, I really want bones because those are going to be misses. And oh, I got two hits. So what happens? Our boy here took a beating right off the bat. Not the way we want to do it. Uh, our friend here has a range of two. One, two. Well, actually three. But because he's the closest, he's going to take a shot at him uh, with two dice. Let's see what happens. Can I get... Can I just catch a break here and not die? And... Oh! One hit. That isn't that bad. Alright. My guys are going to die pretty quickly. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, Alright. So... 
that's the way that went. So, oh, and our Harriers move. One, two. Oh, wait. I was going the wrong way. One, two, three, four. Ooh, do they have range? No, they do not. <laughs> oh, boy. This is not going good. That is for sure. Well, hopefully, maybe I can take this out. And that's the only thing that I'm hoping for right now. So we're going to move. We're going to move our two. One, two. Then we're going to move up. One, two. So now we're going to be attacking the, sp the spire. That's assuming we don't have any unforeseen delays, which can occur any time when you're dealing with manufacturing. Oh, you guys are talking about something else. Cool. Trust me, these guys, these guys are usually dead on. If it's a little late, it won't be a problem. Trust me. All right, so we're going to attack here. And we are going to hit this for one. So that is going to take away a range which kind of helps us a little bit then he's going to attack it for one as well it's not going to stop the elf though the elf is, is going to keep on going trust me and he only does that glide bomb once oh i'm close enough for the guy glide bomb aren't i all right, well, we'll handle that in a minute. Okay, so we've hit that. They don't have a range. Uh, now, what's going to happen is they're going to hit back. Now, the elf is going to come out. It goes one, two, three. It's within range. What it does, it's going to do two damage to everything around here. That's what Glide Bomb does. Now I'm armored, so I'm going to absorb one of those, which I'm going to do right now, but I also get hit for one. This flies back and does not come out for the rest of the wave, if I believe I am correct. All right. They moved. They do not get an attack. The high rise does get an attack because it's a range of three. One, two, three. The closest it's going to hit. Uh, gonna roll two dice. We're gonna hope that we can survive this. I don't know if we can. We shall see. And no, we take two. And guess what? Much to our dismay, our Battleborn has died. But it has done some damage, and that's what counts. Uh, the Marinette, uh, Mirrorette. I'm sorry, I can't say that. One, two, three. It can't hit here, but it can hit here. It, it gets two dice as well. We've got to hope for something here. We've got to hope for a little luck or we're going to be in trouble. Unfortunately, Glide Bomb isn't an attack, so armor doesn't help you there. But yes, he's done. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy enough to fix at least. Hmm. Makes me wonder what I should do next. Um, oh, we need double bones here. And, oh, no. Complete and utter death. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough. So, everybody went. Everybody's gone. Everybody's dead. Except for a cram. Now, if cram dies, the game's over. I've lost. This is what I'm talking about, that you have to be very strategic in what you do. Um, hmm. All right, so that's the end of that phase. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. Wow. Hmm. Boy, I'm going to have to think this out. All right, I'm going to come over. It's my move, so I'm going to come over here. I've got to hope I get something, like a relic or something, that'll help me out. 
something that'll help me out. Um, so I'm going to turn this over. Oh, it's a fountain. Now, fountain. Um, let me just look that up. I think I get two health every turn. That I'm next to the fountain. Until the end of the wave, and then that would go away, I believe. Um, I believe I'm right. I do believe I'm right here. So I believe that I, I'm next to that fountain. So I can heal two health. Back to full strength. Now would be the Harrier's move. One, two, three, four. Now, do I go block them? I could. Hmm. But boy, I'm gonna put my way right, right in the way of this thing here. Boy, this is gonna be a real tough choice here. I think I have to go in. I have to take my chances. So I'm gonna come in here. I have three, three I can do three damage. So I would kill one of these Harriers. Now that also gives me an upgrade. Do I want to upgrade? You can upgrade up until two or three. Oh, goodness. I think you can. Oh, you can add two upgrades, I believe. Boy, do I want to add another to go four? I think I got to. I think I got to add another and go four. Now, something I'll point out is that you have to move the Harriers such that they end their move closer to your fortress. But they don't have to take the most direct route. Ah. Okay. But they can't go by, can they? See, yeah, I could have, I could have probably moved them through here like this. But I, I felt, and the reason I did what I did is I moved them this way because it was the quickest way to go, and I always felt that, that that's the way to go. Okay, so because I defeated that, I got an upgrade. And just to confirm, Shannon, that I do get two upgrades, I believe. I, I, I can only get two upgrades. Or is it three? I'm not too sure. But now what's going to happen is anything in this range is going to fire at me. Well, this doesn't have any range attack anymore. It has range, but it only has one range because we took out that. So that's a good thing. We don't have to worry about this spire here. And let's switch to the other camera so we can get a little closer. Uh, like where those three paths are clumped, you could have used that to slow them down a bit. The dots on, yeah, I can get two upgrades. Oh, tell you how many upgrades he can take before he flips. Ah, so he takes two upgrades. Now, when he flips, the funny thing about this guys, and this is why I don't know, I don't know if I want to flip him, is when I flip him, you lose the two upgrades that you have. But what do you gain? You gain three movement. You get six health. And that might help too. And right now I've got five health. I would get one more but lose that, that extra upgrade. All right, so now it's my turn. I don't have to move. I can stay and block him. Oh, no, we had to finish this turn. I'm sorry. So now I'm going to see what I get hit with. I'm going to get hit for two. But I have armor. That absorbs one and that goes away. All right. So now we start to turn again. 
because I'm next to the fountain, I can upgrade and get back my one. I can move to the side here, but I don't want to do that because I would block them. And he gets the ability, ability survival, which helps him heal. Ooh, that's, that's a good idea. Well, I'm going to have to do it anyway, so I'm going to kill him. All right. And I'll have one Harrier left. My next ability would be to flip over, but here's the thing. I would lose my two attack here. But I would get an extra health. And that would put me at six health. And I only got one more Harrier to kill before I end the phase. Oh, now one other thing is I do get one source for each guy I've killed. So I'm up to six source. So there we go there. Now because I killed that Harrier, it doesn't mean the next Harrier quick strikes me. Or would he quick strike me right away? See, these are some of the confusing things I get caught up with. But I will be able to... Um, but I'm going to get rolled against by this. So let's hope that we get a couple of misses. Ooh, but two hits. Armor absorbs one. There we go. I believe I would have got quick striked. So I probably would have lost another thing. But it wouldn't matter because I would have had the heal regardless. Hmm. All right. So let's go to our final our, our final part of the onslaught here, where it's my turn. No, the heir's faction happened to be bird based. Uh, quick strike just means he gets to attack you before your spire fires. Ah, okay, cool. Since we don't have any spires at the moment, it doesn't really do anything. Well, that's good. Because now what happens is, is I'm going to take and finish him off for two. I'm going to gain another. And I would get another upgrade, which I would take, of course, one of these. Because I can get two more now, because I have that. Um, They're going to take a shot at me. Uh, they're going to do two damage. But it's only really one. And there we go. All right. And that's the end of the wave. So that's how a wave would end. And so let's uh, go to our big screen. And just show you some of the upgrades that we would happen to do during this. Wow, that was... It wasn't easy. Uh, how long are we in? We're in 44 minutes. All right, so we're going to do the upgrades at least. And uh, I'm going to show you how that works. And Shannon's going to help me through that a little bit. This is the point where we were talking about on the sheet the things that we want to do. All right, so now we would start all over. Because we finished the onslaught. So what happens? Well, we're going to come right back to the top of that list I was showing you. So we're going to go into an event phase. And for wave two, D6 event, gain free architect for your preparation phase. Gain one free architect for your preparation phase. All right, Shannon, if you could just explain that one, that'd be great. I, I think I get one free uh, spire in an area I control. Um, we have seven, seven source, but we also get source at the beginning of each wave. So we're going to roll the D6 for our event phase and see what that is going to do. And that is over here. I'm going to roll a D6 and I'll read to you what, what the possibilities are. On one or two, Darb gains an attack and HP upgrade. So he can get pretty jacked up. Remember, he comes out on wave three. A three and a four immediately add a fortification upgrade to all the heirs aspires. And five, six add joust to 
The heirs preparation phase. Ooh. Joust. Uh, let me find. Oh, oh, oh. Those are not. Those are not fun. No, thank you. All right. So. So the first thing we're going to do, we're, we're going to roll on that. Sorry, I got lost there for a second. And we're going to find out what, what's going to happen. Let's hope that we don't add anything to this. So we're going to roll, and it's a three. Of course, we're going to add fortifications. Isn't that just the way it is? Mm -hmm. So we're going to add a fortification here. A fortification here. Fortification here, and I hope I got more fortifications. No, I do not. I'm out of fortifications, so we're just going to we're going to put one of these down here, and we'll remember, and we're going to move fortification there. All right. All right, so that takes care of that. So we've taken care of the event phase. No market phase, like we said. Income phase. Well, we do get some income, I believe. Wave two, we're going to gain seven more source. So we're going to have 14 source to spend to add to our seven. So why don't we do that first? And then wave two, we get seven CP. And that's going to help us too, but we'll worry about that one thing at a time. So we are going to go through and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to build, beef this up. Because remember, the next wave is going to be even tougher. Typical game, you get an income, but we are mean on this one and don't give you any source income. Upgrades are limited resources, uh, a limited resource, but we only gave you a... Uh, Eight and have since increased the number in the box to 12. Look at you guys, always giving something. Artifact is a minion. You get him for free this wave without having to spend CP for him. Oh, well, there you go. Well, obviously, I'm going to take a Battleborn, so let's, let's just do that and remember so we don't forget. So I'm going to put one there. Boy, I wonder if I should take a Dispatch, though. I think I'll take the dispatch. I need the range, I got a feeling. All right, let's do that. All right, so now we're going to start our upgrades. One thing that we want to do is we want to try to build a spire. And in order to do that, Forsaken Dispatch, gain artillery. All right, Forsaken Dispatch. Hmm. That might be something that we look into. A drilling outpost might help us even better. Drill refinement. Gain three source. Can only be built during the build phase. Gain six source at the end of the onslaught slide. Uh, Sam's can attack flying units. Yeah, I got to put a Sam out there. That's for sure. Uh, all right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend three source and upgrade our... That would cost three, and it would be a total of eight if I did it, where I can upgrade dispatch units and battleborn units. Hmm. So he should have seven source? No, I earned by defeating uh, the creature, I got seven source. And at the beginning of the wave, I get seven more source uh, because of um, uh, wave two. So don't I get, isn't it 14 source? I'm pretty sure I'm right on that one. Maybe I'm wrong. But if I do, I'll do that. That would be eight from 14. That would leave me six. And I would want to construct a 
siege. Oh, that would cost quite a bit. No, can't do that. Uh, beginning of the wave, you don't get extra source in this specific scenario. Ah, okay. So I just got the seven I, I have. All right, with, that changes everything. So we're going to pay, pay three to upgrade uh, any Battleborn. I do get the CP, though. All right, what? I probably need a, a, a mining thing. So source drill. Source drill, source drill. That's over on the other side there. So that would be level one. And I believe that's just the, the mining drilling outpost that would go here with one fortification. Which isn't much. Don't forget to remove that fountain. Yep, that's got to go, unfortunately. And that source well is available. My recommendation is put up a dispatch platform. All right, that's what we're going to do. Dispatch platform. Dispatch platform. Ah, here we go. All right, dispatch platform. So that would cost the three. One. Uh, no health whatsoever underneath it. And it has one attack and one thing. Okay, there we go. So we'll put that there. It can be upgraded three times. We got cam there. Cram, excuse me. Uh, okay, so that would cost three. Yeah, that would cost me everything. I, I would have one left. All right. Use your architect to turn, to turn it into a siege tower. Okay. Use my architect to turn it into a siege tower. I'm trying to find where that is on the thing. Throw it the other sort. Throw it throws the other source well. So once you upgrade it, you can bunker buster that. Oh, okay. Bunker Buster. At the start of your turn, this spire may attack another spire or fortress within its range. Fortress should still counter attack. Uh, when you jack that thing up, it'll go up to six, which will be one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I get it. All right. That's under the architect abil uh, ability builder. Sorry, I'm throwing a lot at you. Okay. Architecture ability. Is architect a unit? Yeah, so that means that unit would go away. Architecture building ability. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Drilling out by purchasing one smelter to fortress can attack two spires. Okay. At the start, Braun start to, with access to their dispatch dispatch platform and drilling outpost by purchasing one smelter. Okay, which would go over here instead of there. Fortune can unlock two additional spire options. Siege Tower and Launch Tower, upon purchase of any of the four Spire types, can be built if available. Boom. So that's where he comes from. There we go. Got it. Okay, so I do not get that. 
So now I do have seven CP still to spend. I was able to still do the honor roll, which would give me the big boys here. Uh, I, they would come out flipped over. Battleborn, yes. They come out flipped over. And they would have three health. So this would cost me two. Buy another one. Four. And then I would have three left. What can I buy for three? I could buy the... Let's see here. There's nothing there that I see. Three. We just know that wouldn't help. I can go with another dispatch for the remainder three. No, why don't I just go? Why don't I just go all Battleborn and just really try to just get there? All right, there we go. I think I got that. It's a brawn minion. There we go. All right, cool. Got it figured out. Perfect. To upgrade one, you must purchase the uh, to upgrade and build, uh, 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 flip those. Once it's upgraded, it cannot be deployed on its basic side. Perfect. All right. Well, let me turn him over there. And let me turn him over here. Because these guys are going to fly, hopefully. All right. That's the way we're going to do that. We got the Siege Tower, which has a range of two. One, two. Now, we're all set. He stays here, right where he's supposed to stay. It's not that deep and heavy, Nick. It really isn't. It's, it's, um, don't forget your, your free architecture. Oh, that's right. Uh, can I use the architecture to bump something up? No. What can I? What could? What, what do you suggest I take for a free architecture? That's a good one. How about a legis? And the, that's a free architecture. That's a minion. And he gets three health. Just my boy here might 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 come strong. He does two damage, but he only moves two. Ooh. I would have to put him on the bottom. There we go. All right, there we go. It's strategic as all heck. That's what it is, and that's what makes it glorious. You can use an ability on a spire when he's adjacent to it. Okay. All right, so there we go. That takes care of that. Now we've got to put together, in the prep phase, we've got three more Harriers, upgraded chip size, and they are grouped as a unit with a Joust. Ah, uh, Joust has three, so, oh, but it only moves two, so that would mean that it does not move it cannot ever sit on top that's another interesting point here is that if you notice the move if you can never have something with with a higher move value on the bottom the highest move value always has to be on top so that and three harriers boom go here and they have to remain in a group so here we go again all right it's about it's about to get it's about to go down here. All right, let's play a little bit into this. Um, we're at an hour, but we'll go a little bit longer, just to give everybody how it feels to, on the second, the second, uh, uh, the second wave here. Yeah, this uh, you got to forgive me. This is a, a little tougher because it's live, but you know I think we're doing a fine job. But these are the things that you're going to go through and you're you're going to see. All right, so now we're going to begin our, our next wave. So, 
where Cram is. I can move Cram first. I don't have to move him last. So I'm going to move him three. One, two, and three. Now what's that going to do? I know exactly what that's going to do and it's going to be a big problem for me. But I really don't have too much of a choice because our friend here is still underneath. Next is the Battleborn. They get to move three. One, two, three. We go again up until there. Remember you cannot go past and there we go. Harriers are going to move. Uh, well, no, we'll, we finish everything out first. Cram is going to hit for three, but it's a funny thing because even though I'm going to hit him for three, he can only lose one of these. So he doesn't lose three. He actually loses one fortification. Part of the reason it's going to seem like it's more complex than it is that the rule book isn't completely finalized. Well, yeah, but you know something? It is playing pretty smoothly. So I hit that but our friend is still here, the glide bomb, and he's just going to come out. And would he come out? No, he can only take me out. He's going to hit me with a glide bomb for two, which is going to hurt. And then he's going to fly back here. I'm out of range here. One, two, three. But this is not out of range here. So this can get hit here. So we're going to roll two dice again. And it's going to take two hits. Ouch. Not what we wanted right off the bat. No. Definitely not. Not a great way to do this. Um, survival. I've got to just check survival. Survival. Whoops, 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 whoops. For goal moving and attacking on your turn to gain one HP. Um... That's interesting. I can do that because, oh, we got to move these guys. I'm sorry. Uh, they're going to move four. One, two. You could do this, three, four, if I wanted to. Okay, we can do that. We're going to move this here, here, and here. He's going to forego attacking. He's going to gain one ch chip because of survival. Even though, boy, do I want to do that because when I kill this thing, which I'm about to, I would get an upgrade. Now I'm going to move here. And I'm going to attack that first. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit it for three damage. Oh no. Oh no. Um, no, he wouldn't have gotten the three damage. That's true. Okay, so I'm going to hit it for three da uh, for two damage. That is going to do that and kill this thing. And we are going to get three source from that. So at one, we're going to go up to four. And we're going to get an upgrade, which is just as good. There. So now we don't move. <laughs> this is going to do nothing, but it's going to be within range of this because it has one, two, three. Well, our Battleborn may just uh, bite the dust right off the bat. Um, goes off the board after it triggers. You won't have to deal with it again. Now that it's exploded, it takes an upgrade off that adjacent. They'll cast it. Oh, it takes an upgrade off of that adjacent spire. Okay. Yes, that would have been valid movement. Okay, cool. Got it. All right. So here we've got two dice. This can't be good. Oh, he does one. If only we could have got it. He's, 
he's gone. Oh. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're going to say that he's closer to him, so he's going to attack here. In all fairness. Oh, but he has a straight shot to him, so let's go there. I think that's fair. Oh, my God. He one-shotted him. Oh. That was not cool. Battleborn's gone. Oh, boy. Now we're in a pickle. Hmm. So now, of course, our Harriers move. One, two, three, four. Hmm. So now it's Argo. One, two, three. But he can move three. One, two, three. Hit him for three. No, he's not going to move at all. We're going to try to heal up. We're going to go one, two, three. And he's going to go one, two. So, he's going to hit for two. And because it's two, it only loses one spire. He's going to get hit back. Okay, he's going to hit back. Oh, for two! We're still alive. But here's the bad part. He's going to get a shot at him as well. And that's going to be two dice. And unfortunately, our Battleborn is gone too. All right. Now, everybody took their shots. Because he didn't move, he's going to upgrade. There we go. Let's see if we could keep Cam Cram alive. And our Harriers are going to move. One, two, three. Hmm. I would think they go there. Four. He would get an attack of two. Which, ouch, is very painful. Now here's an interesting question. We have two range, one, two. That's not going to do it. All right, so Cram. So now it's Argo. We've got a chance to pick these guys off. I can go one, two here. And stay out of their range. I do get a star for killing that, too. Oh, no, I don't get a star. I only get one star for that. All right. He's not going to move. Or does he, does he have to move? One, two. I think he has to move. I think he's got to go one, two, because he has to always keep trying to move if he has a way to get to the castle. Yeah, that's the way I'm going to play it. I'm going to see what Shannon says. Uh, I'm going to have to move him up here and do that. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to hit for two. He's going to hit for two. Oh, no. I want Cram to hit first. He's going to hit for three. And that's going to take one off. And Cram is going to get an upgrade, which, we again, we're going to go... Heavy on. Doesn't move because he can't 
get closer to the fortress. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So instead, I would move here, which would make perfect sense. Okay, so that would be that. Then we would attack two into here, so that would hurt him for two. He would attack... I think he would attack Cram. That would make the most sense because that's the hero. And that would do just one damage there. Hmm. That's the only way I can see fit here. But our friend here, one, two, three is in range. One, two, three. I mean, one, two, three. Okay. So he does get a shot at him. We got to hope for a miracle here. He does have the option to make that move because of its its lateral and doesn't yeah doesn't have to make him but doesn't have to make a lateral move. It would keep him alive though. But it would put me in danger. No, oh, that's a tough call. I wonder. Now let's 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 leave it the way it is. Let's see what happens. Oh! <laughs> oh, he stays alive. For one more round, he stays alive. Glorious. Glorious. That is a lucky roll. We rolled bones right there, and he stays alive. Okay. That's the end of that turn. So now we would go to the next turn. Nobody's going to move. Now, if he kills, he gets an upgrade. He gets a health back. Does he get a health back if he kills? Because no matter what, Cram is going to kill. So, he's going to hit, and he's going to kill, and we're going to get one more. We're going to get one more uh, um, source. And then the next guy is going to come up, and he's going to be at three. And Cram is going to hit him for four, actually. And Cram counter attacks. Oh, he does counter attack? Ooh, that's interesting. So we killed that one off. Cram gets another upgrade. He can only have two upgrades. Oh, he can only have two upgrades. So now that we killed him, what we do get another source. But we can't upgrade and we can't get another health for killing that guy. So this guy comes up. He also has quick strike. But he is going to attack here. He's going to do two damage, which is one, but we get a counter attack. And we would hit him for four and then kill him? His upgrades capability, which is two in this case. Yeah, that, that he couldn't get any more because he already had two. So we're going to lose one health. And we get a counter attack. So if we get a counter attack, he's dead. And we finish this wave. Wow, that's brutal. Hmm. Huh, huh, huh. Barely. But they would still get a shot at him, I believe. Okay. So he's dead. And we get two for that. So that's another wave down. They would still finish out the round, though. Wave doesn't end... 
because your Agilis is still on the board. Oh, so we keep on going. Okay, so anyways, he would, <laughs> unfortunately, we would come right here because he's within range. He's going to take a shot at him. Uh, boy, can we get double bones again? No, not this time. Boom. Cram survived. We have priority here, so we could possibly build something here that can really help us out. So there's a lot of things that we can do here. Okay, we made it through two waves. Zero units on the board and basically can't be interacted with. Okay, so that would end wave two. Wave three, we would roll another event. Our friend here would come out, uh, Darb, and he would get plus one attack. And then it would be a Joust in their upgraded uh, thing and the Harriers in their upgraded form. Uh, and they will be bringing it old school. So they would be coming around again. Meanwhile, we're trying to get closer, inch closer, but Cram is in a little bit of bad shape here. So it wouldn't be that great, that's for sure. I don't know if we'd be able to win this one, but there's a way, and if you strategize and you do it right, and if we're able to get some more of our own uh, spires out to counteract things and start attacking other things, we can do things. If we upgrade this, if we're able to upgrade this, we would be able to attack that and take that down, and then we can concentrate on Darb and everything else. Interesting, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely an interesting game. Uh, like A little sluggish at times, only because of my fault, uh, because there were things that, that, of course, pop up that don't pop off when, when you're playing by yourself. This is fantastic. The fun of this is, is you've got wave after wave. It has that League of Legends feel to it, but it also has that chip theory feel to it. And it is a beautiful masterpiece that has been woven by these guys and done so fantastically. I mean, take a look at this board. I mean, this board is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, just the innovativeness of, of, of building up your fortress. And, and the neat thing about it is there are other um, factions and stuff like that. So you can play a four-player game where you're attacking each other and you've got all these things that are going on and you're trying to build up your fortresses, but you're getting attacked at your gate and you have so many beautiful things going on that I just can't... I, I, I can never dream something up like this. And to, to know a couple of guys like Adam and Josh to, to come up with stuff like this and make it as beautiful as they have. And, 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 and we have to, I, I have to have to thank Shannon so much for coming in and helping along the way. Made it a lot smoother. I'm the one that kind of slowed this up. I'm telling you right now, if you have a chance or if you want to take, it's like betting smart money, folks. I'm going to tell you. Um. I'm going to tell you, go to the Kickstarter pledge page. Get yourself a copy of this. I'm telling you, you won't be disappointed. This isn't even the final, the final, the final, the final job here. I mean, this, this isn't final. These rules aren't final. They're going to add even more to it because they don't sit there and, and you think I'm doing a sell job. I'm sorry. I'm not doing a cell job. I'm telling you right now how I truly feel. And that they are going to make sure that when you get that box and when it comes to your house or you see it at Gen Con or, or wherever you see these guys set up and they hand you that box, you know that you are getting the very best quality. You know you're getting their heart and soul that they put into it and all the great things that they do. I know I ran a little over. I felt it was it was good enough to see another full wave and see how just tremendous this plays. You you don't want to stop. You want to keep on going because you, you think you're beat down and then you go, well, you know, I can take some CP and I can add a couple of these and I can add some stuff here and I can do this. Maybe I can get Cram to sit back a little bit, maybe get a little bit. And then before you know it, you're getting your butt kicked all over the field here. 
tremendous and i i just can't imagine or or even envision when this thing is finished he's they're going to have a solo book which is going to have a beautiful story like they always do uh you're going to be able to play pvp you're going to be able to play co-op i mean do you need anything else more in the box i mean the only thing that's missing in the box is them two jumping in and coming and playing with you with it i mean come on think about it friday pledge matter go get it Okay? Go get it. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Kabuki, if you go get one, then I know I did a good job. Because if Kabuki doesn't get one, then you know you, you didn't do it. Listen, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this. It was live. It's clunky, but that's what I want you to see. I want you to see how it plays with a real person playing it. And some of the things that, that you're going to do, that you're going to, to bang into. And that's what I like to do, I like to bring you realism, not a cut up show. Not that there's anything wrong, because I'll tell you another thing. If you if you want to see it nice and smooth, go see go see my boy Ricky Royal. All right, really great guy. Go see um, Rolling Solo when Adam puts it out. They're going to give you a great production and really walk you through it. I'm going to give you the realism, and I'm going to show you a guy that really isn't good at re reading rules how much i enjoyed and you and, and you felt how much i got sucked into it because i wanted to i wanted to keep this to an hour but i got sucked into it and that's what happens you, you get sucked into it and that's the beauty part i hope you all enjoy this shannon again thank you so much for hopping in thanks everybody for watching this if you're not subscribed click and subscribe hey we're almost at ten thousand. that's all i ever wanted to get help a brother out until next time it is your old pal rob we'll be back we may even continue on with this um or or even keep going and maybe give it another shot maybe take a different different twist to it you never know remember that that little elf guy got switched around what if he didn't what if something else happened that's the beauty of it the events make it a new game every single time hey it is your old pal rob until next time i We'll see you guys all soon. We have a ton of announcements on Sunday. Make sure you check the vlog. I may be live again before then. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And as I always say at the end of everything, because I talk forever, be good to someone. Okay? Be kind to someone. Because not only is it going to make you feel good, it's going to make that person feel good. And also, to the world, you may be one person. But to one person, you may be the world and treasure that. You guys know you're my world. We'll see you soon.